What's up everybody, Thralls Melly here once again. I'm the Croc Neck and I have yet another collection update for you. Once again, going over mostly stuff that I missed in 2023 as well as some other additional pickups that I made. Definitely a lot of death metal in this one because I mean there were a huge amount of death metal releases that I missed because last year was just well, pretty insane for death metal. But yeah, once again, got a lot of stuff to go over, so we are just going to get right down to it. Conjureth, The Parasitic Chambers. This is the second album from this San Diego death metal act. Features current and former members of bands like Golgotha and Coffination and Void Ceremony. I got into this band with their album Majestic Dissolve, which I thought was pretty decent. I actually went back and got one of their early demos and honestly I kind of like that one a little bit more. But I think this is probably the most solid offering I've heard from them yet. This is very twisting, chaotic, dissonant, just very ugly death metal, very much along the lines of bands like Ascended Dead, I would even say Titan Blood to a certain degree. But there's also a lot of elements at play on here, like you have very cavernous vocals, though the music itself doesn't necessarily scream cavernous death metal. It definitely has its more like incantation moments, especially on immortal thresholds, like you get the squealy moments on there. And there are some moments that definitely slow down to like some more doom laden chugs and that sort of thing. But a lot of this moves at a very frantic pace. It's very explosive across the board chaotic drumming like it's absolutely nuts their frequent turnovers blast beats rarely does this album let up in fact there's really not even a lot of like additional atmosphere on here like in terms of like build-ups and such you do get some more like thrashy moments on here occasionally on songs like dimensional ascendancy devastating cataclysmic unearthing and uh deathless sway of torso's calm and that's a interesting title and even the song the ancient presence has like some more d beats on it in fact it's one of the few moments in there where it has like more of that punky D beat sound to it. Honestly, it kind of sounds a little bit like Possessed, so very early death metal, but a lot of this kind of relies on that frequent, just, you know, bombastic, explosive death metal style that is, again, very chaotic and twisting. And, you know, while they do use a lot of distant riffs, there's a lot of good, like, just flat out chuggy ones or ones that are a little bit more melodic. Like, of course, you get a ton of, like, apocalyptic riffing, as you would call it, on there, but it's honestly pretty well put together. Outside of the stuff that is very fast paced on here, there are some good slower moments on here. Like, Immortal Thresholds has a really solid syncopated breakdown, which stands out on this entire album because I don't think there's another moment on here that is like it. And the last track, The Unworshipped 2, uh, is really interesting because it starts off, I don't know, kind of uh, trippy and weird. Like, there's this really strange drum and bass intro to the song, and is notably a more doom-laden, oppressive, dark song rather than the you know, explosive, chaotic stuff that is pretty much dominating the rest of this lesson. Yeah, I really dug this. This is just explosive, nasty, just kind of evil, dark, twisted death metal. And I mean, anyone that's been watching this channel long enough knows that I love that sort of thing. If you're a big fan of, again, I would say like Ascended Dead. Ascended Dead, there's definitely some comparisons to be made there, but also like Incantation, um, I get a couple of moments on there that kind of sound like Possessed. And maybe even bands like Funebrarum or uh, Dead Congregation. I would say there's some similarities there too. Check this out. Nasty listen. Depigus or Depigus. I think I heard it called that too. I don't really know how to pronounce this band's name. Uh, but this is their debut album, Death Ooze. This is a California-based death metal act that is just unbelievably weird and kind of hard to describe. Baseline, I would say there's a lot of autopsy worship and just like old school grimy death metal, but this band does so many unique things with atmosphere in terms of giving it a very unsettling and weird sound. I compared it to the audio equivalent of watching like Faces of Death on VHS and some of the comments when we reviewed the latest one, the self-titled one, which is weirder than hell, said it's almost like the same vibe you get from like flipping through old Fangoria magazines when you were like a teenager. All this is pretty accurate. Now I got into this band with their second album, Bushmeat, and then I really started getting more into them with uh, the Wet Market EP. And uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely a fan of this band. This band is just strange and unnerving. They're heavy, they're very rooted in old school death metal, the riffs are sludgy and dense, and the song structure, while it is, again, kind of meat and potatoes, it's just how it's arranged and, you know, uh, woven amongst all the atmosphere, uh, it kind of gives it a unique sound. Like, this band is as wild as the 
cryptids they like to talk about because man there's a lot of stuff about cryptids once again the opening track in here point pleasant west virginia in 1967 yeah it's we're we're right away going into mothman like that's a strong open right there you have huge death doom segments and songs like me kong man eater which is about like a giant catfish that eats people I mean, those things do get huge. Uh, Corpse Flower and uh, Deloy's Ape, which I had to look that one up um, because the intro sample to that is absolutely haunting. It is a 911 call from uh, a lady uh, saying that a chimp is tearing apart her husband or her friend and it's coming after her. And I was reasonably sure I heard that sample on a TV show about like, when animals attack or, you know, whatever those shows are. Uh, and if it's the one I'm thinking of, I don't think the lady making the call made out very well either. It's a pretty gory story. But I think the reference itself is to a uh, fraudulent scientific find in terms of a new species of ape. Either way, the song is crushing, heavy, dark. And on its own, it'd be a solid, heavy, gnarly song, but it's that additional atmosphere that's there both you know in like the transitions between tracks and in the songs themselves and then you also have clarissa's low disgusting vocals or kind of like a background gurgle they're almost inhuman sounding hell there's even kaiju noises on here uh angelus killer of the living i know for a fact i heard the gamera scream on there and i love kaiju so that's always welcome now this is the 2023 reissue of this on uh, memento mori records and this actually comes with a bonus track that wasn't on the original oasis of the zombies and i mean it's absolutely filthy and disgusting much like you'd expect it's a little bit different in the sense that this is more of a doom laden track and it does that sort of like disembowelment like clean guitar on top of the just slow droning riffs i mean it does break out into like other stuff too but i thought that one kind of stood out just because that isn't something that is really prevalent on the rest of the album. But yeah, baseline, I would still say if you like Autopsy and, I mean, if you like Greg Wilkinson's production because uh, he did the mix on here, I'm pretty sure you'd probably dig this band. Just know full well that all of their albums are a very weird experience. And honestly, it kind of makes this band stand out. Again, they do a lot of like the same stuff that a lot of old school retro death metal bands do, but the uh, flat out weird, disturbing atmosphere, I don't know, it, it really just kind of makes this a more engaging listen. Uh, check this out, check out all their stuff, honestly. If you haven't checked out their new one too, that one might be the weirdest one yet. And that is definitely saying something if you've heard any of their albums at this point. Either way, check this band out. They're just weirdly awesome. Excarnated Entity, Mass Grave Horizon. This is the debut full length from this now Portland-based death metal act. I believe they were originally from the Washington area. Not necessarily the longest move there, but either way, this band features uh, ex-members of Triumvir Fowl, Mortiferum, and Predatory Light. And I was a big fan of their Still Born in Ash demo, and I heard a lot of people rave about this, and somehow it just kind of flew under my radar again. Death Metal was just <laughs> being released every single second last year. And I anticipate that's probably gonna be the case this year. Either way, inevitably you miss some stuff. And I really wish I hadn't missed this one because this is absolutely excellent Death Doom. It is haunting, dark, oppressive. The opening track, Objection, pretty much sets the pace right away. You have dreary droning riffs, these haunting harmonies on top, which there's a lot of great just miserable harmonies on here. Just like the most dreary, melancholic, depressive sounding harmonies ever. They're always descending. They sound like the guitars are weeping. But this does a really good job of balancing out those slow, lumbering moments with faster, more explosive, just blasty moments with great tremolo harmonies. This thing is just dark and murky as hell and I absolutely love it. Like there's really not a track on here that I didn't like. The vocals are mostly cavernous, ghastly roars, but they're very effective and they contribute massively to the atmosphere. And this, I believe, was produced by Dan Lowndes of Crucimentum and Honestly, I could definitely hear a little bit of Crucimentum in their sound overall. But his production honestly makes this feel even more dark. Like it's, again, very dense and thick, like a haze of fog, or in this case, like smoke over the battlefield. Like, I mean, this album kind of sounds like this cover looks, if that's 
any sort of indication. But again, everything is separated well. I think the drums sound fantastic in here, and the guitars sort of combine to this very <laughs> tuneful wall of murk. Whether it's their more brutal side in terms of like heady breakdowns like on songs like Irradiated Shadows and the Butcher's Pulpit, or whether it's their more doom-laden, lumbering, lurching side on uh, Corridor of Flame, they really just seem to nail it. And honestly, there's a lot of great melody on here too. Like I was kind of surprised with that. Like all the lead harmonies I think are quite excellent. The end of Irradiated Shadows has a moment that I could almost say is kind of comparable to bands like Sulphur Aeon. Like it feels epic, but it also feels very sinister and dark. And again, that frequent use of harmonized tremolo riffs, it just sounds haunting and bleak, especially on uh, Carcinogen Shroud and the title track. This might be the best Death Doom album that I missed last year, flat out. Uh, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, believe the hype if you heard any of the hype about this album. If you're a big fan, again, of Cruciamentum, I'd still say Incantation to a degree, but way more woeful, I guess. Like, I don't know, like this definitely has like a huge forlorn melancholic vibe. I can definitely still hear a bit of Triumph or Fell and Mortiferum in particular in this band in terms of the style. Pretty much if you like flat out Death Doom, you like cavernous death metal in general, check this out. This is absolutely amazing. Living Sacrifice, Ghost Thief. This is the eighth and most recent album from this Little Rock, uh, Metalcore, yeah, Groove Metal, I don't know, kind of thrash, death thrash, I don't know. This band has had a lot of different incarnations just in terms of their sound, and to a degree, their lineups. But I've been patching up holes in the collection for these guys, recently brought them up in the States of Metal for Arkansas, and I saw that this was one that I completely missed. I didn't even know this one came out, and it came out over 10 years ago. So yeah, this band has been pretty damn quiet. And I've been into this band for a long time. I got into them with uh, The Hammering Process, which is honestly one of my favorite metalcore albums slash groove metal. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I really dig that album, but I also dig their earlier stuff. their more death thrash sound because they had just quality riffs and just great musicianship and god-awful vocals. That is still something I just can't get past with that band and kind of makes those listens a little bit difficult, but I mean, they got riffs. No, I didn't listen to any of this before I bought it. It was just like, oh, it's Living Sacrifice. We'll just check it out. Why not? This was an Amazon gift card purchase. So yeah, uh, really didn't feel like I was losing that much. And honestly, it's, um, it's okay. In terms of this era of Living Sacrifice, one of the cool things that I really dug about them was the extra percussion. And that has been essentially stripped away. And what you are left with are songs that occasionally border on thrash metal, but mostly a lot of sort of mid-paced, more melodic metalcore. You do have some guest spots from Ryan Clark of Demon Hunter. Eh. And then uh, Dave Peters from Throwdown on one of the tracks, which his appearance was a little bit better. But a lot of the songs, well, they have like good, heavy, chuggy moments, you know, great breakdowns and, you know, like some solid lead work across the board. The songs just feel kind of flat and uninspired. It feels like they kind of just took their mid-period sound or at least the sound they, you know, took on after Inhabit and just kind of streamlined it and smoothed it out and made it a little bit more accessible. I mean, you have some like stronger songs that are a little bit more aggro and a little bit more punchy like Mask. Uh, American Made has some really good, uh, like thrashy gallops to it. And Despair is honestly kind of closer to their death thrash years in the past, or at least as close as they've been, uh, debatably. But then you have songs like Before, which kind of feel like a metalcore-ish tribute to an Amon Amarth song. It's just, you know, kind of a anthemic, melodic death metal sort of romp. And I mean, it's okay, but you know, in terms of the bulk of material on here, I just feel like it's very flat and very sterile. And that has a lot to do with the production because it feels like it's been just wiped clean of any grit, like they went over it like a crime scene or something. In place of like any bit of grit and just sort of like more muscular stuff, you get a lot more melody, which, you know, I don't have much of an issue with melody, but I feel like this is kind of half-hearted and really just sort of a shadow of themselves. But, you know, overall it's not terrible. It's just kind of bland. And I just feel like this band has way more in its wheelhouse that they just did not really dive into on this one. Like this is kind of just a stock metalcore slash groove metal album. Not terrible, but there's really 
Not much on here that would make me come back to it very often. Still, if you're a long time Living Sacrifice fan, I mean, you might find some stuff on here you like. I urge you to check it out for yourself, form your own opinions, who knows. You might absolutely love this one. For me though, it was just kind of there and now it's gonna go in the pile and I don't know, I might go back to it, but eh, overall there's really not a lot of uh, re-listening appeal here for me. Phobocosm, Deprived. This is the debut full length from this Quebec death metal act. We actually went over their most recent offering for Ordained and I believe that one came out right as I had my uh, year end list whittled down. And I'll say that album could have possibly found its way on my year end list because it was damn good. So naturally when I went hunting down that album I saw this one was in the same distro and I was like well yeah I might as well just snag this too. And this is absolutely awesome dreary atmospheric death metal this band absolutely loves immolation and the band themselves confirmed it in the comments when they thanked us for reviewing their album in fact they've actually uh covered immolation and it wasn't on this album but apparently on another album they have an immolation cover so yeah we were we were pretty spot on on that one but i mean they're not really hiding it you have a lot of the same things you get in immolation the very dissonant interesting guitar work Lots of droning, heavy tremolos. The opening track on here, uh, Sleep Deprivation. It kind of works as like an intro, but it's actually musical. You have this long buildup of like creepy whispers and droning atmosphere, and then the tremolos come in, and it just comes in heavy and murky and dense, and I really dig it. I do think the production is a little bit better on Four Ordained. Like this one kind of gets really muddy, and the guitars are very forward in the mix. And at points they kind of do drown out the drums, but I mean overall I just kind of dig the sound of this band and it might have something to do with them sounding like Immolation. That's never a bad thing in my book, honestly. While I love the frequent dark tremolos on here and blast beats and they're very explosive but just dark foreboding sound, they are even more dark and bleak when they slow down on here. The three track run of Solar Storm, 27 Days of Darkness, and Drown have some absolutely crushing breakdowns and grooves on there where they slow down the riffs and it just feels absolutely haunting and dark. And I love the vocals on here too. Like he's got a great roar. It's not overly reverby, but it's powerful. It's very well projected. And well, I mean, kind of close to Ross Dolan for obvious reasons. And Drown in particular, the lead melodies on that, they sound absolutely agonized. They're kind of like weeping and screaming tones, the guitars, like it kind of sounds like they tortured the guitars, like if that makes any sense, like it just has that sort of just anguished sound to it. And Awaken Unconscious I feel like has a little bit of a morbid angel nod, especially in the intro of it. It kind of stomps in like the opening of Dominate off of Domination and it is a little bit more aggressive sounding, like it kind of has a bit of that morbid angel just sort of heaviness to it. Um, yeah, I'm bringing up a lot of bands that I like, so yeah, I really dug this one and uh, I definitely want to hunt down their second album as well. If you have not checked out this band yet, we were very new to them, in fact, it was a fan that brought them up to us when we were at a show, so yeah, you guys got to check this out, they sound like Immolation, you'll like them, and man was he right. And so far I'm liking everything I've heard by them, so I want to check out the other album that I'm missing now, but yeah, if you love Immolation, uh, Morbid Angel, Chrissy Amentum, uh, just stuff like that, like heavy, dark, oppressive death metal. Check this out, absolute banger. Stenched, Gorging on Mathetic Rot. This is the first demo from this one man Mexican death metal act. I got this one, kind of a combination of word of mouth and just kind of distro diving, and I do that pretty frequently. And uh, yeah, I uh, heard enough good stuff about it to you know check it out and uh yeah this is pretty damn awesome definitely a shorter release only four tracks on here but this is just some swampy gory grimy death metal pretty much embodying bands like autopsy and mortician it is again all one man and i like the fact that he actually plays drums on here too like the drums are real everything on here sounds well very much like a demo like it's very raw and grimy but, I mean, it kind of works for the aesthetic. There's even some cool horror synth atmosphere in here, too, to kind of capture that old-school death metal vibe. The opening track, Black Adipocere, has a 
gross death doom sort of vibe to it the production is just murky and rotten there's like a extra grimy sizzle to the guitars and bass on here lots of that old school kind of caveman chug and groove sort of vibes on uh, songs like putridity mass excretion and reentombment which reentombment even features some pitch shifted vocals kind of giving it that old school carcass vibe at times d beat sections like yeah this pretty much just checks off the list for like just old school grimy death metal it is 15 minutes of rotten riffs and inhuman vocals and uh, i dig it like this is just flat out gross as hell and uh, i loved every track and then and outside of that it's really kind of hard for me to elaborate on that any further just because it's a short offering at 15 minutes but i mean if you like caveman death metal and you like it gory and rotten and just kind of wretched i would check this out like very much along the lines again autopsy mortician uh say like a little bit of sanguine sugabog in there too or you know uh maybe depigus not quite the atmosphere of depigus few things are as strangely atmospheric as depigus but uh yeah it's kind of in that vein check it out it's rotten and filthy and if you like that sort of thing you'll probably dig it end the sin of human frailty this is the second album from this new jersey based metalcore slash metallic hardcore supergroup features current and former members of bands like shy halud the acacia strain fit for an autopsy uh this is one that i heard a lot of hype about and uh when i actually picked up my copy of jarhead fertilizers last album i saw this in the distro and i was like yeah i'm gonna have to check this out like literally everyone's been talking about it and I am so glad I did, and legit, this is one that could have been on my year-end list if I had heard it. This is just absolutely feral metalcore. Like, this is the metallic hardcore that I love. A lot of stuff that is in the vein of bands like Converge, Botch, I would even say Nails to a certain degree. There's a lot of blast beats and caustic, squawky riffs. A lot of that Botch sort of energy, albeit played with unyielding aggression across the board you even have some guest spots from dylan from full of hell and jr from pig destroyer and this album is just feral as hell the songs are generally very short and explosive but they are packed with some of the most devastating metalcore riffs i think i've heard this year i was a big fan of uh teeth's ep last year a biblical worship of violence and i feel like if i had listened to this this would have been pretty much right in that same category of just explosive emotional but just brimming with hatred hardcore slash metalcore whatever the hell you want to call it i don't know i just flat out love this album and it is really dynamic too like it's not just your standard you know like hardcore chugs and grooves and such packs in a lot of blast beats there's occasionally like more blackened riffs that pop up the vocals are snarling at all times but when you get down to songs like thaw it's almost kind of an industrial hardcore song like there's Really cool sense on there. I believe that is the song that Dylan uh, from Full of Hell pops up on. But it is notably different than a lot of the songs in here, namely because that electronic background, it still brings in all the heavy, disgusting riffs. But, I don't know, it kind of gives it a vibe like Atari Teenage Riot or like The Prodigy mixed with like Converge, which in my head, I kind of want to see that happen a bit. There's a bit of that, you know, like 90s industrial remix of an already metal song sort of vibe to it. I dig that. I mean, that's still kind of a weird throwback that I like. But outside of like the just feral nature of this album, I like the atmospheric touches on here. Like the beginning of Embodiment of Grief has that sort of like bluesy kind of slide guitarish almost sound, like kind of like a you know, an opening to like a David Lynch film and uh, you get a little bit of that also on Hollow Urn. But honestly, like it's the just vicious nature of this album that I absolutely love. Twice Devoured Kill, which features JR from Pig Destroyer, is absolutely vicious song. Like notably one of the grooviest and punchiest and the riffs on that are just disgusting. And generally I'm hit or miss with Will Putney's production, which he's in this band as well and does the production, but I really like it here. Like honestly it fits in his cool like again atmospheric touches in the background i really like that it kind of makes this album more immersive and just some of the subtle tweaks he does like the big open breakdowns that show up he'll add a touch more reverb to the snare and it just sounds like someone firing a gun off in a canyon i just kind of dig that like it really fits here this album is awesome it is maybe a half an hour long and it is just vicious from start to finish. There is not a second that really lets up on here and 
Yeah, uh, I slept on this one. I should have checked this one out much earlier. This very well could have been on my year-end list. This is up there with the best metallic hardcore that came out last year, 100%, at least in my opinion. If you did not check this one out, much like I didn't, and kind of slept on it, I strongly recommend it if you're a big fan of Converge, Nails, uh, if you actually checked out that Teeth EP that was on my EP list, strongly recommend this. It's very much in the same vein. And honestly, outside of Vitriol, this is one of the nastiest listens I've had here lately. So yeah, check it out. End Seeker, Global Worming. This is the fourth full length from this German HM2 loving death metal act. I've been a fan of these guys. God, man, it might have been around their first album or first EP. And these guys are just plain fun. They are very transparent about uh, the bands that have influenced them over the years. It's definitely Entombed and Dismember and Bloodbath and all that grimy HM2 stuff that I absolutely love. And they do a really solid job of that. Like, there's nothing super flashy about them. They just play solid HM2 death metal. So it was no surprise when I listened to this one that it just sounded, you know, like straight up HM2 death metal. They do inject a little bit more melody here and there, like songs like Nemesis, which is a little bit like slower, more brooding, it has more atmospheric melodies to it. But overall, like this has all the tropes of HM2 death metal. You have your more DB driven barn burners, like the title track. Uh, Hanging Gardens has a little bit more of like a punky slash hardcore vibe to it. Violence as Gold has like, you know, a little bit more of a Gothenburg tinge to it, albeit played with like an HM2 buzzsaw tone. Like a little bit of like a classic at the gates, maybe a touch of carcass in there in terms of the gallops. And of course, a little bit of dark humor, the song CBB, which stands for Grunt Blood Vampire. Believe me, I want to say what it actually says but YouTube seems to watch when I say that particular word. So, way to be a bunch of grunts, YouTube. Anyway, that song's just a fun barn burner, good riffs to it, and lyrically it's pretty hilarious. I mean, it's very, very specific kind of vampire. Like, yeah, that vampire has a very specific well that it only draws from, I guess. Either way, uh, yeah, this is just a flat out fun album. Kind of short, like I think it's under 40 minutes, it might be around like 35. But I really dug all the songs. Like, there isn't really a song in here that I think just kind of feels lackluster. They're full of energy. If anything, yeah, they sound a lot like the source material. But that's kind of always been their thing. Uh, the guitars are solid on here. There's great riffs across the board. I love the vocals. That dude hams it up in such a great way on here, and I, I just kind of dig it. Yeah, if you just like HM2 death metal, flat out, and you like you know, German bands that sound like they're Swedish bands, like Revel and Flesh and stuff like that. Definitely check this one out. It's just a flat out fun riffy banger. All right, we get a split here from two Swedish death metal bands. Imagine you're surprised that I'm going over more HM2 stuff. Anyway, this is a split from Feral and Crawl, and this is the, I have to read this, uh, Make Us Those Who Are No Longer Alive split. That is an odd title. I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Anyway, both of these bands are from Sweden. Both of them play very Stockholm, HM2 driven death metal. And I like both of them. I've been listening to both of them for quite a while now. And uh, yeah, I was actually pretty eager to pick this one up. I did not know it was as short as it was until I actually looked at it. Uh, this is maybe 12 minutes worth of material, but honestly, it's pretty solid. Each band has two tracks. Feral has the first two tracks from Ancient Tombs and released from the bondage of the earth, and it is straight up HM2 death metal. The production on it, it's a little odd. I feel like it's kind of oddly compressed, but song-wise, it is exactly what you expect from the genre in terms of like Entomb, Dismember, Bloodbath bands that I just brought up. It's been a while since this band has released anything on their own. I think 2018 was their last album, so it was really cool hearing them come out with something, and both songs pretty much check off everything that they do. They both come out swinging. I think out of the two, I really liked uh, Release from the Bondage of the Earth. That has that more straightforward DB kind of crusty sound to it, and yeah, it's just straight up Swedish death metal. Now, Crawl is a little bit different. Uh, I think there's a little bit of death grind to their sound. Like if you took a band like Rotten Sound and stripped out a good chunk of the grind and replaced it with death metal, I think you would pretty much have Crawl. Their debut album Rituals I think is absolutely crushing. I love that album. And this is kind of more of that. Uh, both songs are short. I think their side pretty much consists of 
five minutes of material maybe. Both tracks, All Is Vanity and Where Dead Flesh Whispers, I think are killer. Again, a little bit more grindy sounding, like the vocals kind of have more of like a, a grind sort of a roar to them. Lots of D beats, a little bit more blasty than Feral, I would say too. Both of the songs have some particularly nasty breakdowns on there, almost kind of comparable to like Nails. Uh, I dig them. I know they also have a full length coming out relatively soon, which believe me, I definitely want to go over because that first one was such a banger. And yeah, uh, I hope Farrell is coming out with something new too. But yeah, another very short offering here, but I dig all of it. I mean, I like Swedish death metal, so that probably factors into it like a lot. But yeah, if you like, again, Entombed, Dismember, you know, Bloodbath, and in the case of Crawl Side, maybe a little bit of Death Grind or Grindcore kind of mixed in, definitely check this out. While it is very short, uh, it is still just packed with HM2 Ferocity, and I love that sort of thing. So, yeah, check it out. Grave Ripper, Seasons Dreaming Death. This is the first full length from this Indiana-based Blackened Thrash slash Blackened Speed Metal Act. I got into them with their Radiated Remains EP. I can't remember if... Wiseblood actually sent that one to us, or I bought it from Wiseblood. Either way, I got it from Wiseblood Records. Great label, lots of killer stuff on there. And another one that I kind of overlooked last year, namely because, again, so many damn releases. But this is just killer, high energy, I would say like black and thrash. Like it has the speed metal tropes, like there's definitely a lot of melody, especially in the lead work. Like the lead work on here, I think, is just crisp and very tuneful, really good harmonies on it, but this has like dined thrash energy across the board and maybe like a little bit of hardcore in the vocals. Uh, his delivery at times almost kind of reminds me of Dwight Hillian from Integrity, which I'm a long time Integrity fan, so that is never an issue. But between all the thrashy gallops and chugs that are on here, there are a lot of great tremolo harmonies. Like they're very icy cold, but they're also very tuneful. A lot of stuff in here that reminds me of bands like Knife and Skeleton Witch. You get a little bit of that sort of like punky motorhead vibe on songs like uh, Red Skies, Only Coldness, and Divine Incantations. There's some groovier numbers like Ripped and Torn Apart. I like that song in particular. It's a really good standout as the second track, kind of slowing it down before getting right back up to speed again. The chorus and the title track in particular just has an absolutely savage riff on it that I love. Nice, good break from the high energy, uh, just kind of blitz the rest of the song as you get this nice, groovy, just heavier than hell chorus. And the song Premeditated in particular, there's like echoes of heartwork on there, like the song itself, like there's just that sort of heartwork gallop to it. The riff is, it's not like spot on, but there are a couple of progressions that just sound a little close. And I'm not saying they actually just went after heartwork and like, no, we're gonna kind of remold this song, but I feel like there's like a little bit of carcass influence to it and it's very specifically that one. But one of the main things I love about this and kind of like black and thrash in general is the energy. Like this feels like an evil kegger. Like it's just a violent, fun, dark party. It never loses steam at any point on here. There isn't a song in here I think that kind of you know, dulls down the energy one bit. Like every song in here just flat out rips and I think this is kind of an improvement over the EP, especially in the production department. I think this sounds just crisp and nasty. There's still a lot of grit to it. And yeah, ultimately this is just a super fun release. And yet another one that, you know, I could have possibly put on my year end list. Like I really could have done a top 50, but that's a lot of work. And I've been sticking with 40 for a while, so that's the magic number. But if I did do a top 50, this very well could have been on there because this is nothing but fun and riffs and just, high energy, just metal attitude, and I dig the hell out of it. If you're a big fan, of, again, of like Skeleton Witch, Knife, uh, God, uh, just Black and Thrash in general. Like, if you just like the sound of Black and Thrash metal particularly, you will probably dig this. Check it out. Grotesqueries, Vile Crematory. And this is the debut full length from this Boston-based death metal act. I heard a fair amount of chatter about this band, and as frequently as I go to Calgary Records Distro, I saw this one like in the distro for a while and I just didn't pounce on it. And I figured, well, all right, I already made up my year end list. Let's check out this one that I saw a lot of people talk about. Now this band features current and ex-members of bands like Morgued, Black Mass, and Abnormality. And I really didn't know what to expect other than, I mean, it's 
probably going to be death metal. And yeah, I was 100% right. But this is some really foul, murky, atmospheric death metal. And I really dig it. Definitely a big 90s death metal sound to it. It's very old school. The guitars are just kind of rotten and murky sounding. But there's a lot of like doomy, sinister harmonies across the board. Lots of atmosphere. I mean, it opens up with church bells ringing. But I feel like they kind of pitch corrected the church bells to make them sound even lower. And even more ominous. The riffs are filthy, there's lots of groove to it, not a tremendous amount of blast beats, but I mean you do get like faster, thrashier sections every now and then. But one thing that really stuck me were the vocals. The vocals kind of have like an almost Frank Mullen-ish quality to them, but like add a bit more reverb and sort of like a incantation style cadence to them. So vocally I would say it's cavernously suffocation-ish, if that makes any sense. But yeah, the whole vibe of it is not suffocation, though. It, like, again, it's more that murky, sinister death metal, like, again, like, kind of autopsy-esque and, you know, definitely incantation, like, uh, the song Meet You With Chain, and it's M-E-A-T. Don't really fully get that song title, but whatever. Uh, lots of killer descending harmonies, like it feels like it's dragging you down to hell. And there were some moments that really kind of surprised me in here, like the song Madness Breed, which fiercely old school, just kind of meat and potatoes death metal, but all of a sudden they squeeze in this, you know, a little bit more technical bridge, like kind of, I don't know, not later death, but like very spiritual healing-esque, like there's a really good lead on it, there's some off-time drums, and the riffs itself, feel a little bit more proggy or at least more proggy in comparison to like the bulk of this material because again it's just very straightforward 90s death metal you know you do get like some touches of thrash in here like the song Gorified the Ageless Malignancy that's a fun one uh you know a little bit more rooted in thrash but this little technical moment on uh, Madness Breed I think really stands out and I don't know if that's sort of teasing what stuff they're going to bring in on another album, but I know I did like it. And like with most gory, gross, grimy death metal, Ayo, I like the song titles too. Like the second track, uh, Corpse Juice, which honestly, I mean, if you really think about it, that'd be more of like a smoothie because you're bound to get like some chunks in there too. Like I can't imagine that's just going to be like a straight liquid. Either way, the song's awesome, but that song title really stood out to me for... Uh, obviously gross reasons. But yeah, uh, this is just solid old school death metal. It's gross, grimy, gory, you know, pretty wretched. And I mean, those are things I kind of look for in death metal. Like I, I like the gross out stuff. It's silly and it's like kind of the audio equivalent of watching like a direct to fucking video, uh, like horror movie back in the nineties. Like, yeah, I, I expect to be entertained and this definitely did that. So yeah, if you're a big fan of like Autopsy. I would also say like Bacterial Husk, which is a Boston band that's doing some really killer death metal right now too. Check this out. You know, 90s death metal pretty much uh, most of the time will win me over and uh, yeah, these guys do it well. So check it out. The Tussnell Rights. This is their self-titled debut EP. Came out in 2021. This is a UK death metal act and kind of a blind buy for me. I forget what I was shopping for in Redefining Darkness's band camp, but I also came across this and I was like, huh, I checked out a track and I was like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. And I just snagged it. And this is another really short offering. In fact, it is under 12 minutes, but uh, this band is pretty damn solid. Much like Grotesqueries, this is a very 90s death metal sort of sound, but these guys really embrace the thrashier side. Like there's a lot of stuff in here that Riff-wise reminds me of bands like Malevolent Creation, Monstrosity, uh, maybe like a little bit of like early Morbid Angel, especially on the first track, uh, let's see, Telekinetic Blood Ritual. So they got it on the spine here. And these little slim cases are, I don't know, they're, they're interesting. You don't see them as much anymore. Anyway, this is very catchy too. Like there's a lot of great melodies. Another one that I think has solid lead work and decidedly very melodic lead work, especially for the more thrashy, aggressive death metal sound they have in here. Every song in here I thought was really catchy, especially Burning Elysium and the last song, Flesh Portal. Uh, those two just kind of just capture that 90s death metal sort of sound. And again, it's a lot of carryover with like thrash metal in there too. Especially Flesh Portal, there are like more breakdowns and grooves in there that are a little bit more similar to like Enforced, albeit with like a death metal sort of like coat of paint on it, but 
the backbone of that song in particular feels more like a thrash song than it does a death metal song. Again, very short EP, so this is kind of a sampler size, and I said I liked every track in here. There are three actual tracks in here. The opening is an intro, which I'm not a big fan of intros. Anyway, I am less of a fan of an intro on an EP, especially an EP that's short. I feel like that is like 45 seconds of just like, okay, I mean, you're kind of just... Uh, building up a very short offering, just kind of get to the music. You strip out that intro and this is about 11 minutes worth of music. Really good music, but still I don't feel like it needed an intro. But yeah, as a sampler size EP that is just there to kind of give you a uh, taste of the music, this gets me interested. I would 100% check out a full length from these guys in the future or another EP. I think the last two songs being that, you know, really solid mix of thrash and death metal really kind of spoke to me, but I really did like the first actual track, Telekinetic Blood Ritual. That one definitely has like a lot more of that Morbid Angel, maybe even Cruciamentum sound to it. Uh, either way, check this out. It's a quick listen, and honestly, minus the intro, this is nothing but killer stuff here. So yeah, check it out. Will Haven, Muerte. This is the sixth album from this California-based hardcore sludge noise post something or other act. I don't know, this band's kind of hard to describe, but uh, after, you know, Seven was such a banger and ended up on my year end list, I decided to patch up some of the holes in my collection, and outside of the debut, this was the only full length that I was missing. Now, interestingly enough, this was intended to be their last album, and obviously that wasn't the case, but if they chose to leave off on this album, they would have left off on an absolutely killer album. Like this one, I don't know if it Rivals 7 because I really love that album, but I've had a lot more time with it. This one is in that same vein and possibly a little bit catchier. Where 7, I think, is just brutal and catching and that atmosphere is extra dark and haunting, especially coupled with Grady's just harrowing growls and screams. This one has a few more like tuneful riffs and Two very notable guest stars in here that really make an impact on the songs they're on. On the song No Escape, you have Mike Shite, Shite, I don't know how to say your last name, uh, Yob. Uh, he comes on there on just vocals, and the parts where he comes in on vocals are absolutely haunting and dark. Like, this band knows how to just transition from, like, the most abrasive, simple, but just disgusting riffs where often they bend and slide and... The guitar tone is thicker than a snicker, but in Mike's vocal part, everything is more quiet and muted and a little bit more melodic, and he kind of does that, you know, raspy crooning and some high wails, and it's just haunting and just absolutely catchier than hell. And then the last track, El Sol, features Stephen Carpenter from the Deftones, which his tone <laughs> absolutely fits in with what this band does, and I guess he's been a longtime fan and friend of the band, so... Yeah, uh, he contributes some absolutely nasty, savage, down-tuned riffs to already nasty, savage, down-tuned riffs, because that is one of the strengths of this band. The other strength in particular of this band is atmosphere. This is the first one where I believe they introduced keyboards and all that extra atmosphere in the background and used it more prominently. It feels like there's always like a droning hum of some kind behind all these songs to sort of like play off of the just absolutely pulverizing riffs on here. Songs like Unit 73, Kinney, and uh, the song 43 are just absolutely punishing songs. Like they're just inescapably dense and heavy and just come down to you like the sky's raining cinder blocks. Even in No Escape where the song is a little bit more melodic and haunting and atmospheric overall, namely because of Mike's appearance, the opening to that features some very old-school Meshuggah-style chugs. Same thing in the song Now in the Ashes, which is one of my favorite tracks on this. But honestly, this whole album is just awesome. Like, I love the whole vibe of it. It has a decidedly very primal vibe to it, but again, all that open atmosphere in here gives it a more immersive, haunting quality. Honestly, like, if... Neurosis decided to become more of a, you know, down-tuned, hardcore band. I feel like this is kind of what they would sound like. And this band is really good about, like, building tension with that atmosphere and then releasing it. And, again, some of the heaviest moments on here, like the song The Sun, S-O-N. That song has a great melodic buildup, and it feels almost sort of 
serene. And then the riffs come in and just punch your jaw clean off your face. Uh, I love this. This is absolutely awesome. And I don't know if I like Seven a bit more. I don't know. Uh, I, again, I've had more time with that one, but uh, this is absolutely killer. I strongly recommend Will Haven for people that haven't listened to them. If they're not on the archives. It's one of those bands that is possibly on the cusp of metal. Like, yeah, they're heavy, but are they metal heavy? I don't know. That sort of weird debate, but um, they're awesome. And uh, I recommend checking this one out. Again, if you like stuff like uh, got 16, also from California, and I would definitely say Neurosis, Deftones, albeit way heavier and darker. And again, even stuff that is more along the lines of like post metal, like Cult of Luna or Neurosis, it's kind of a whirlwind of all those things. Check it out. This is absolutely killer. Witch Vomit, The Webs of Horror. This is the debut EP from this Portland, Oregon death metal act. I've been a fan of this band since their album Buried Deep in a Bottomless Grave. Honestly, that is one of my favorite death metal albums that has come out of the whole Pacific Coast death metal scene. I think that is just an amazing, riffy, catchy, but just brutal and old school album. I still jam the hell out of it. And honestly, I jam the hell out of Witch Vomit all the time. Like, again, this is just such a killer band. But honestly, I had never heard this EP before, and I believe it was only available on tape. This is a 2023 reissue on Nuclear Winter Records. And as soon as I saw it in whatever distro it was on, I don't know if I got it directly from Nuclear Winter. Either way, I got it because I had never checked it out before, and I've liked everything from this band since. And well, I like this. I will say it is a little bit different. Uh, it's way more raw, of course. I mean, this is like their first EP. It almost kind of sounds more like a demo. The guitars have a more like HM2-ish sound because, I mean, they have like heavy sizzly guitars, but it's not like fully like a, you know, the buzzsaw HM2 sound. This, they do sound more like that, but it's very bassy and dirty. In fact, the bass it's kind of indistinct back there, like you can kind of hear it humming, but you can't really make out individual notes as much because the guitars feel like they occupy a lot of the low end and it's just murky and filthy. The vocals, I will say, are less dynamic than they are on like the later albums. Like there's a lot of good like high and low on the later albums where here like it's kind of just a steady grunt and overall that kind of echoes with the music too because it is more primal than they already are like these are more meat and potato songs lots of d beats you know very straightforward songwriting but it still has its fun standout moments like the song vomit ritual i think has some absolutely killer lurching bending riffs that are, kind of give it a little bit more of a death doom flavor but a lot of this is very high energy you got some good groovy pockets but you get mostly d beats occasional blast beats and just solid riffs. Granted, I think their riff work is way better now. It's way tighter and way more adventurous, but across the board, I still think this is really solid and it kind of just captures where they were just getting started. And I mean, they even illustrated Witch Vomit for you on the back. That's really sweet of them. And there's even a song called Necrotic Lust in here, which I'm so sure that that is exactly what you guys feel every time you watch one of our videos, or at least the ones with me in it. Anyway, very much kidding there. Uh, this is a pretty solid EP. Again, it kind of captures them at their beginning. It's a little bit more raw and a little bit more primal than I would say some of their other stuff, especially the later stuff, which is still raw and primal, but at least a little bit more adventurous. Uh, if you like uh, Autopsy for sure, um, God, just like kind of a lot of like the Pacific Coast death metal stuff that's a little bit more on the like punky side. Like uh, Cemetery Lust is also kind of close to this, albeit like I think this is a little bit heavier in terms of the guitars. But yeah, check this out. Check out Witch Vomit in general. Honestly, I love pretty much everything they release and this one just got added to that list too. So yeah, check it out. Scab Hag, Wading Through Mephitic Filth EP. This is the second EP from the Cincinnati-based death metal act, and second one that I've used uh, Mephitic in a title, which is you know, kind of interesting. I mean, I suppose you run into that going over a lot of death metal. Anyway, I've been a fan of these guys for a little while now. Uh, I got into them with their first EP, Postulant Perversions. Even got to see them live at a really cool venue in Tiffin, Ohio. They put on an awesome show, got to talk to the members, and I actually picked up a copy of the first EP there. And I believe it was the bassist that I was talking to where he said that they were you know, still very proud of what they did, but they didn't necessarily like the production in terms of how it came out. But uh, they were definitely working on that with the next one, and they clearly did. This has a much more bulky, 
heavy, more muscular sound overall. The guitars feel even thicker. The vocals sound even more, you know, just brutal and gross. Like there's a lot of just like low gurgles and even some pig squeals, which, you know, I'm not like the biggest fan of pig squeals, but they are effective with this. Like this is very much in the vein of like Sanguasugabog and, you know, stuff of that nature. Like it's groove laden, heavy, lots of double time grooves, breakdowns. You do get occasional blasts and two steps in here, but this is very much some flat out ooga booga death metal. And honestly, it's a lot of fun. The opening track, Infectious Decay, kind of works as like an intro. It's a shorter track, like a minute and a half, but it's musical. Like it's an actual song, you know, vocals, and riffs and all that. And it kind of sets up like the rest of the album, just in terms of like leading you in with like, you know, a quick little flurry of heaviness and how it caps off, I think is absolutely awesome because they use a sample from Uncle Buck and it's the first time Uncle Buck meets Bug. Like right when Bug's trying to make out with uh, his niece on the steps of the school and Bug comes in, so you ever hear of a tune up? And you know, John Candy's response was, you ever hear of a ritual killing? <laughs> That movie's priceless and immensely quotable, and I could pretty much go on about that, but yeah, let's get back to Scat Hag. But that pretty much just kicks off the album into the just the heavy syncopated breakdowns, the guitars again thicker and heavier and just meaner sounding, and man, the breakdowns in here are just disgusting, especially on uh, Vivisection and uh, Force Fed into a Wood Chipper, which props in the song title. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah, this is just like no mercy, swampy, disgusting death metal. You do get an interlude, which is called Interlude. And honestly, I was like, all right, well, let's see where this goes. Getting like interludes on EPs, like, man, you don't have that much time. I feel like it kind of gets wasted, but I like this interlude. It's cool horror sense. Very John Carpenter-esque and, well, uh, all of a sudden we get some more movie samples and it's directly from Reanimator, which, yeah, no, Reanimator absolutely rules. Totally appropriate and with good reason because the next song is called Reanimated and it's an absolute banger. You do get some stuff that is a little bit outside of what is usually on here in terms of like just the heavier grooves and like two-step kind of almost grind slash brutal death metal moments. Uh, Lord of the Flies, which actually has uh, Devin Swank, so more uh, Sanguasuga Pug comparisons there, is a little bit more slow and brooding from the start and then it starts picking up in intensity. I like that kind of slow build to kind of get the uh, moshers all kind of in a fever pitch. And while that would be an awesome closer, I do like the fact that they throw in a cover on here. They cover Zombie Apocalypse, originally done by Mortician, and they do it very appropriately as in yeah, you have to have the movie sample in there. And of course, it's from Dawn of the Dead, you know, and when there's no more room in hell, that whole quote. I mean, great movie. Like, that is still my favorite out of, like, all the George Romero movies. Like, it's just brilliant. But they do an awesome job in the cover, and it's brutal as hell, as to be expected, because it's a mortician cover. But yeah, uh, this is a fun EP. This is awesome, and honestly, I see it as a pretty big improvement over the first one, which I thought was really good too. Like, I think the song rank is a little bit more creative. Like it's still primal, ooga booga, drag your knuckles, you know, that sort of vibe, but there's a little bit more sophistication to it, I guess. It's a slightly more evolved caveman. Like the brow is slightly less furrowed and, you know, occasionally it stands up straight. Either way, I mean, if you're a big fan of definitely Sanguasugabog, maybe 200 stab wounds, um, like some of the more like primal, like metallic hardcore, like uh, Jesus Peace too. Definitely check this out. Yet another killer death metal band from Ohio. I kind of like this trend of just awesome death metal pouring out of my state here lately. But yeah, check them out. And finally, we have Zoth Exogalactic. This is the third full length from this Seattle, Washington based. Okay, let's see. Technical death slash thrash metal slash black and thrash slash progressive metal. It's kind of all those things. It really is. And uh, this band is an absolute buttload of fun. I was already a big fan of their first two albums, Invasion of the Tentacube and Interdimensional Invocations. Uh, these guys have fun sci-fi themes slash sci-fi horror, like it's Lovecraftian, but it's, it's got like more maybe towards the sci-fi side, like it's not entirely very horror-esque. I don't know, they're just fun and for very technical music, 
it's not a chore to listen to in terms of like just like it's nonstop wankery and just constant showboating. It is, but it works with the songs. Like the songs are frequently loaded with great melodic lead work, harmonies, uh, excellent playing. Like there's like tapping and just kind of like whatever note that they can hit, but still integrate into a song in a clever and catchy way. This band pretty much does it. It's kind of a combination of bands like, I would say Atheist, uh, maybe even Sluggage, just because they are a little strange in terms of their themes. And uh, vocally, they do get uh, a little bit more theatrical. Like you get like these more blackened screams, but you also get like uh, almost like theatrical bellowing uh, in terms of some of the lyrics, like kind of similar to Sulfurion. And uh, when it comes down to like the heaviness and the mix of melody, like there's a lot of stuff in here that reminds me of Arsis too. I also feel like this one is just a little bit more controlled than their previous two. Like they're very all over the place. And sometimes they can get in that like kind of like techie realm where they're just kind of trying to be the most technical, lavish thing, and they kind of lose the sense of the song. This one, honestly, the songs flow really well for as technical as they are. Like, they feel busy, but all the busyness really contributes to the songs. And when they switch gears and styles, like from thrash to death metal to like the more black and stuff, it works really well with the dynamics. In fact, on their more blackened moments, they kind of remind me a bit of Absu. I mean, of course you get a lot of blast beats and like just fast D beats, and a lot of thrashy sections, but there's also really good groovy sections and occasionally like just big tonal shifts. Like, yeah, this can be technical and brutal at times, but also you know, kind of sinister and foreboding. Like the syncopated gallops on the last track, Map to the Stars, Monument to the Ancients, it's just powerful. It drives the song. It's a little carcass-esque, but you know, with some extra melodies added on top of that that kind of give it a more technical, progressive flair. But one of the big standouts, just in terms of like a big tonal shift, is the song Reflective Nemesis. Without those harsh vocals on top of that, it feels more like a power metal song. Like it's very triumphant, it gallops into battle and it's armored steed and saves the villagers, except villagers are in space and on a different planet and the horse is a cyborg or something. I don't know, it feels like a power metal song. Like it has that sort of epic triumphant larger than life sort of sound, but it's still done with like a death thrash intensity. And I really dug it. Like I was kind of surprised hearing those more major chord sort of driven melodies on it because the rest of this is again kind of all over the place but at that point in the album they really hadn't got like that level of epicness yet. I really enjoyed this one. I mean I kind of knew it would. I'm not like the biggest fan of like super technical music when it comes down to like tech death and stuff like that but when a band does it well and again it's not just like wankery like it actually contributes to the songs the melodies and it actually makes them memorable not just in the sense of like well that was some really impressive musicianship i won't remember a lick of that like the songs are actually catchy and memorable on here and i was kind of late on this one i know there were a lot of people in the comments talking about how awesome it was you guys are right again yet another one i missed just because 2023 was insanely busy and Again, I think this year's probably gonna shape up to be the same way, but yeah, this is absolutely awesome. Uh, if you're a fan, especially of Atheist, and I'm gonna still say Sluggage and even Absu on here, check this band out, check out all their stuff, but honestly, this might be a new favorite by them for me. This is just an absolutely fun, kind of bonkers listen, and it is incredibly catchy. So yeah, definitely check it out. All right, and that wraps up yet another one of these. I am currently working on the next part of this stack, which, yeah, I got a lot of stuff to go through, but after that, um, I should be all caught up for a while. Might get back to States Metal. I have some other ideas, of stuff I wanna talk about just in terms of like you know, topical stuff, like maybe just one-off video things. Anyway, tons of content coming away because we're perpetually busy here. But of course, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsofmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. That link is also on our channel in the banner down in the lower right hand corner. But if you want to get some Thralls of Metal merch, you have to go to thrallsofmetal.com. We have t-shirts, both new ones and old ones. The old ones I believe are discounted, provided we have your size. And we also have hats too. So if you would like to get any of that stuff, click the link 
down below. And of course, thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that stuff. It means the world to us. We have a lot of content planned for you this year. Uh, discography rankings are coming soon. Uh, you might actually see the Black Dahlia murder before this one. I don't know. Uh, we haven't shot it yet at this point, but could be. After that, we have Meshuga, and then we are going to decide the next batch of bands. And I have a idea in terms of how we're going to do that, and it should be a lot of fun. But yeah, tons of stuff coming, and of course, one more big thank you because you guys are all awesome, and you guys keep us driven to keep doing this. And uh, yeah. Uh, it's just been an amazing ride five years into this and uh, it really hasn't lost its luster whatsoever and that is large in part to you guys. So thank you once again and we will catch you later.